with just seven games to go, Derby have a big opportunity to go seven points clear of their closest rival, Bolton, heading into this weekend's fixtures. They face Northampton Town at six fields this weekend, and it gives them the opportunity as the only team in the top five to build an advantage over those teams behind and make their games must win and apply the pressure of Portsmouth. Shall we take a look into this game against Northampton? Let's take a look at the head-to-head -head and both teams' recent form. So here we have it, Derby County head to Northampton on Saturday. It is a three o'clock kickoff. If you're going, let me know down in the comments down below. And obviously, this is a massive fixture. If we just scroll down on this screen here, we can see the head-to-heads. Now, obviously, they've only really played each other in the FA Cup, apart from earlier this season in the league. And... It's been a bit topsy-turvy. Derby obviously bettered uh, Northampton at Pride Park in 2020, one of Wayne Rooney's first ever games where we won 4-2. Scott Pollock, the former hashtag United player, played. But then this October just gone, they played each other on the 31st. Derby County won 4-0, absolutely ran rampant that night. Max Bird, I believe, scored a double and... We really started to hit form. It was about a week after the Stevenage game, if I remember rightly, where there'd been a lot of drama. It really felt at that point of the season that Paul Warren was sort of at make or break. And although Paul Warren had received the support of the owner and upstairs, it still really, people still aren't sold on the Paul Warren project. But... We are where we are. We're second in the league. We're not far away from Portsmouth. And we're obviously not safe in second yet. There's a long way to go. But this game this weekend could have massive implications on that. And here's why. As you can see, Northampton Town have lost three of their previous five. Derby have back-to-back -back won their previous four games. And I think it speaks volumes Peterborough put five past Northampton. Blackpool won 1-0. Wickham Wanderers picked up a 2-0 win. Their draws have come against Charlton and Cambridge Athletic. Cambridge Athletic? Cambridge United. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, so obviously they're not in the best of form and they're in a bit of nothingness in the table. We'll get into that in a minute, but I think... Derby win this game, it's seven points. I did a video on the run-in for all the top five teams. If you want to check that out, I'll link it on the video right now. It It's mega. It is mega. It'll be in the corner. So if you want to go and check it out, either go and check my channel out after this or uh, go and watch that video now. But as you can see, it could be a massive game. Let's get into the league table. And here's why it could be massive. Bolton, Peterborough, Barnsley and Portsmouth all don't play as a result of the international call-ups. Now, I don't know why Derby are playing. Obviously, we haven't got any first-team call-ups for this international window, which, massive, I think it's amazing, really, because it gives us the opportunity to go seven points clear of Bolton, gives us the opportunity to get two points behind Portsmouth, and then you're applying pressure. You're really, really applying pressure at that point because Bolton then have to outscore us by eight points over uh, their seven games. And then Peterborough would need 10, 11 points. Same with Barnsley. So for me, if we go five wins on the trot this weekend, I think we're in a very, very good position. But let's take a look at Northampton and why it's a bit of a nothingness for them. Now, if we scroll down, obviously, they're not in the best of form. I've highlighted them now with the cursor. They're on 50 points. They're 15 clear of relegation. So, ultimately, they're not mathematically safe yet. But, realistically, I can't see Cheltenham, Cambridge, Burton, Reading, Shrewsbury, Charlton and Exeter all overtaking them over seven games, eight games. So... I'm not, they're sort of stable for next season. They're in a position where they're in League One next year, basically. They only need to sort of keep up that gap for, what, three more games? There or thereabouts. And as you can see, the teams below them, apart from uh, Charlton Athletic, who have won three of their past five, Exeter have won two of their past five. No one really looks to be in any good form. Reading have had a couple of wins, but have also lost three. So, 
sort of not really gaining much ground in that sense. So I think they're stable for next season. I think the same for Exeter and Charlton. Charlton at a push might be in a bit of danger. But Northampton in, in a space of nothingness. So shall we take a look at their manager, their squad and their danger men? So here is the manager of Northampton Town. He's been at Northampton since 2018, where he was the under-18s manager. He became the manager of the first team in February 2021, and he spent time at Brackley Town between May 2009 and September 2015. He's an Australian 49-year-old. He's managed 170 games for Northampton Town, winning 67, drawing 40, and losing 63. Now, decent for Northampton. Keeping them in the league, in my opinion, I can't see them going down at this point. I think he's done a really good job. And I think Northampton should be very impressed with the job he's done. And hopefully, heading into next season, they can kick on a bit. I don't quite think they're going to be in a position to push for playoffs next season. But they could be in a really good position to be a stable League One side next season, in my opinion. If they keep, keep hold of some of their best players, I think they could do a really good job in League One next year. A player which Derby fans will remember from last season. Now, obviously, he didn't have the greatest of times at Derby. He had that memorable moment at Port Vale um, where he kept the ball in play and we went on to score and ended up winning the game. But 21-year-old Tony Springer is at Northampton Town. Now, he's not done a great deal since being at Northampton Town, in all honesty. He's only started one out of ten games. He's played 208 minutes, which... Is just just over 20 minutes a game. Uh, so, not exactly hit the ground running there either, but is a face that you will remember. Now, if we take a look at goal scorers, assisters, contributors, the main man on your lips is going to be Sam Hoskins. 14 goals this season and three assists. He's their top contributor in the league this year. Mitchell Pinnock is also a name that should be well on your lips with six goals and seven assists in all co in uh, League One. So that's 13 contributions. Kieran Bowie also on 12 contributions. He has been, they have had some really good players this season. And to be honest with you, Hoskins, could he be a potential signing for a League One club next year? Are Northampton going to be able to keep hold of him? You look at Mark Leonard, obviously the highest rated uh, player for them this season he's there with six assists so they've got some players which Derby need to look out for players that they need to be careful of and to be honest with you the way we've been playing three clean sheets in the last four games I think maybe another one what do you think let me know down in the comments are Derby going to pick up another clean sheet now before we get into team predictions I've got to give a word for Dwight Gale. He came off, I believe it was after about 25 minutes in the Bolton game. He pulled up and instantly knew it was game over. Uh, hopefully, it's not that long. I believe we'll find out later today in Paul Warren's press conference, because I'm releasing this on Thursday. I believe we'll find out how bad the injury actually is. Hopefully, it's not too long, but Paul Warren wasn't sure either. It could be two weeks, it could be eight weeks. Um, it's just something that we've got to keep an eye on. Uh, hopefully, he's not out for too long. Hopefully, he'll be back in and around it within a couple of weeks. Because if we haven't got him and we're left with Martin Waghorn, not that Waghorn's a bad striker by any means, but it's just not the same. Waghorn doesn't have the same ability, the same speed, pace, etc. So, we'll just have to see how this impacts the side and we'll we'll know, most notably, heading into this game. So, this is the team that I've selected, but there are a few caveats. Tom Barkazen and Joe Ward came off sore uh, against Bolton, and they decided to protect them, so they just took them off. Wilson replaced Ward, and I believe Thompson came on for Barkazen, I believe, if I remember rightly. So, um... Was it Thompson? Or was it Waghorn that came on for Barkazen? Might have been Waghorn that came on for Barkazen. Whatever. Don't matter. But, so, if those two aren't fit, although they will have had a week, essentially, uh, then I'd put Wilson in on the right and probably go to a midfield three rather than a front three and bring in Corey Smith. Uh, but, obviously, 
that all depends on injuries, fitness, etc. Now, you'll probably see I've got Thompson in the middle of the park. And that's because I thought he was excellent when he came on the pitch. Now, he's one of those players who is not quite learned when he needs to have energy, when the energy needs to disappear, when he sort of needs to keep it tight. But the energy is massive for me. And I think it's really important. I think we saw against Bolton, Conor Horahan just didn't quite have the legs to keep up with play. Now, I'm not saying Northampton are going to be like Bolton, but it's, again, one of those situations where having those extra legs in midfield, it's never going to hurt. So, for me, I'd put Thompson in uh, and then probably give Fozzie the captain's armband. Obviously, Sonny Bradley uh, will probably be back this weekend. Now, apparently, he had concussion, but who knows, really. It, I don't think Paul Warren confirmed concussion. Um, so, yeah, this is a starting eleven I'd go for heading into that game. Let me know yours down in the comments. I think it's obviously a massive, massive game. And the back three seems to be working for us. It's four wins on the spin. So let's stick with it. So as you've just seen, there's my team prediction. I predicted the scores in a video earlier this month where I predicted the entire month of March. It's going to be difficult. The end of the season is going to be difficult. There's going to be twists and turns with just seven games left to play. But I've got every faith in Paul Warren. I've got every faith in the squad. Let's get this season done. Let's get promoted. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hit that subscribe button while you're down there and I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and Football Weekend.